All right, guys, if you've followed Linus Tech Tips for any sort of extended period of time, you probably know that I'm a bit of an audio geek. So this is something that I am extremely excited about. This is the brand new SP2500 from Corsair. It is from their gaming audio series, which normally I would sort of turn my nose up to and I'd say, blah, gaming audio, that just means it's not very good. And so they market it to gamers who don't know better. No offense to any of our gamers in the audience. But Corsair has taken a completely different approach to this particular set of gaming audio speakers. This is a 2.1 setup and they have aimed to build the best overall speaker setup that they can in a price range that gamers can still afford. So why don't we find one side of this box or other that has some specifications on it that I can show you and we'll go through what Corsair has to say for themselves about this setup. So first thing over here, we see that Corsair has a two year warranty on it. Corsair's warranty is legendary in this industry, so you can pretty much believe that they're gonna stand behind it for as long as they say. All right, specifications. Frequency response is from 35 hertz to 20 kilohertz, plus or minus three decibels, okay? 220 watts total power, that is measured via FTC RMS. So that, what is that? Root mean squared or something along those lines, which means that it can do this for days at a time. Your speaker system, not the one that they've submitted for rating, okay? Not for two minutes at a time, not for one musical note at a time, can do it for days at a time, every single one. All right, subwoofer dimensions, satellite dimensions, you can read those if you want. The subwoofer is an eight inch, 120 watt subwoofer with durable rubber surround. Okay, so it's a bridge dual 60 watt class, you have bridged, okay. So dual amplifiers. So this speaker system actually uses a dual amp design, which means that you have one amp that drives the larger speaker on your satellite, and then you have one amp that drives the tweeter on your satellites. So I'll show you guys that when I actually take it out of the box. You've got an ultra efficient, integral power supply with uh, universal input. So imagine that Corsair building something with a good quality power supply in it, go figure. Satellites are bi-amplified as I mentioned before. Two-way design with detachable audio cables, three inch 40 watt mid-range drivers and one inch 40 watt ferrofluid cooled silk diaphragm tweeters. So those are the ones that I was mentioning before are independently amplified. 50 watts per satellite measured via this method. The reviewer's guide for this actually mentions this a lot. It is incredibly important because you can build a 1000 watt speaker setup that basically just sounds like noise because it's not, because all the sound is just being corrupted. Okay, so PC input on the subwoofer. Dual, okay, you can read all this if you want, I suppose. Uh, full t oh, this is kind of actually, we'll talk about headphone mode in a, mode in a bit. Mod X theatrical audio processing for Blu-ray and DVD audio that recreates the theater experience. That's kind of neat. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and start getting this out of the box. And I am going to refer to my cheat sheet here because the reviewer's guide is that long and it's actually chock full of good information. I have read through it a couple times, but I cannot necessarily be expected to remember every little thing every time I am human. Sorry, guys. Okay, so here in terms of included audio cables, we have... Uh, one little headphone jack, straight pass-through, okay. Then we have two power cables. So those are using, imagine that, a PC company goes and uses four-pin CPU power connectors. <laughs> okay, and then we have an RCA cable, just like that. Okay, we have a power cord, standard PC power cord. No, it isn't. Look at that, it's a two-prong one, so there's no ground on this guy. I guess you probably could use a grounded cable, it just wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be grounding out via that third prong, so. We're packed using environmentally friendly, ow, environmentally friendly cardboard packaging. Love to see that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start taking this stuff out here. And that is the subwoofer, that thing's big. Oh, here we go, go documentation. So let's see what we have in terms of documents that Corsair is going to tell us how to use it with. So stop, do not return this to the store. This is a quick start guide. So the quick start guide is like this thick. Hopefully there are a few different languages in there. So they show us what's in the box, how to use the desktop controller, how to make all the necessary connections. Here's some tips for the best sound. There's tip number one, use a high quality sound card, bam. 
So yes, please, please do not forget to use a high quality sound card. And there we go, that's the English part. So it looks like it's probably in about eight languages or so. Some safety information, which you should read, but I'm not going to, because I'm actually not plugging it in just yet. Got some more packaging materials here. Go ahead and pile that behind me. Something in here, okay. This is what unboxing's all about, right guys? Having this experience. So here I've got a couple of uh, speaker stands, I think is what these are, but there's only one way to find out for sure, and that is to just try things until something fits. Okay, so these have little rubber feet on them, so we'll go ahead and put those aside for now. And then we have our control pod. I'm a big fan of control pods for desktop PC speaker systems. Generally gives you a lot of control. This one actually has a bunch of different modes that you can use in order to um, optimize it for the kind of content you're listening to. You can turn on the Mod X mode, which is great for some movies, etc. You can actually turn on a headphone mode, which is optimized for, actually, believe it or not, it's optimized for low quality headphones because Corsair, uh, like myself, recognizes that most of the gaming audio products out there are just codenamed for low quality. So their headphone mode on their speakers is actually designed to compensate for low quality gaming headphones. So check that out. They really thought of everything on this one. So we'll go ahead and take out one of the satellites here. I'll show you guys this. There we are. So it's uh, pretty heavy actually. Not like super heavy like my Kefs at home, but feels, feels built anyway. It's a very, very plain look. What we've pretty much come to expect from Corsair. So here we are, there's your power for the tweeter, your power for the mid-range, and they show you that this is the left speaker, so there's your power input, and then around on the other side we find not a whole lot to speak of. Down on the bottom we see four rubber feet, and let me just see what these are for. Do they go like this? That doesn't make any sense. Where's the picture? Well, we'll figure these out in a bit. Okay, so there's one of the tweeters, or rather, one of the tweeters, one of the satellites, rather. So here, we'll grab the other one, and then we'll pull out all of this packing material so we can get access to the subwoofer. I'll never be able to pack this back together. Thankfully, I don't have to. Okay, so here's the sub. And we'll go ahead and move the box. Thanks, cameraman. And once I've got the whole thing unboxed, I'm actually going to take a little bit of time and I'm going to go through my cheat sheet with you guys and tell you some of the more interesting things that I learned about this speaker setup when I was reading through it. Oh, this is different. I had kind of expected this to uh, go from front to back the long way. Okay, so here is the front of our subwoofer. You can see you've got a nice little Corsair logo here. You've got your port here. Okay, the overall finish is the like I, the, the rubberized sort of texture that we saw before. Cameraman's gone ahead and put his iPhone 4 on the subwoofer for scale. So that's how large the sub is. And actually, why don't I go ahead and put one of the satellites on there as well. Just so you can see for comparison what it will look like on your desk. Okay, so there's the iPhone. So let's go ahead and move around to the side. Go ahead and show you guys what it looks like from this side. So very, very, very plain. What you'd expect from a quality piece of audio equipment, it shouldn't really stand out. It should be all about the sound it makes, not the uh, appearance of it. So here you can see we've got our power input over here on the left, along with a bunch of warnings and certifications and all that good stuff. Then we have Corsair's part number here, and then we've got all the business end side of things. So we have our remote. So that's the, uh, here we go. The control pod just plugs in like this. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Next we have our satellite's power. Okay, so those plug in just like that. They are color coded and it looks like, yep, yeah, they only go in one way. So there's your right and then your left goes in much the same way. All right, the other connectivity we have down here is our line in. So you can see we have our left and right, and then an auxiliary input. 
So that's pretty straightforward. And you can see that we have not only the auxiliary one here, but we also have our auxiliary two input on the back of the control pod, as well as a USB connection. So I'll be back in just a minute. So I'm totally going to cheat a little bit because it's an awful lot to remember. There's lots of charts and diagrams, so we'll go through some of this together. But I'm going to show you some of the stuff that Corsair has to say for themselves in their reviewer's guide. So I already mentioned the bi-amplified satellite speakers. Oh, we did find out what these are for. So these are stands. You do want to ensure for the best possible stereo experience that the satellites are mostly pointed at you. So that means if you're sitting at a desk, and your desk is kind of below you, you would want to position these under the front two feet of the speakers in order to have them pointed more at your ears and rather than at your chest. So that is the reason that they've gone ahead and included that. Okay, studio quality digital crossovers. So this is a good thing to talk about a little bit. I'll let cameraman sort of check out the speakers while I drone on over here. Oh, actually, no, first thing. This has a 1.8 inch TFT color display readable in daylight or at night. So I'll go ahead and make sure that you, oh, rather. So I'll go ahead and make sure that I show you guys what this looks like in one of my follow-up videos for this, uh, this speaker set. Okay, uh, studio quality digital crossover. So you know what, I'd really recommend going ahead and reading one of the online reviews about this if you want to read all of this, but basically what it means is that you are going to have a more, you're going to have a much finer control over what part of your audio signal gets played through the subwoofer, what part gets played through the mid speakers, and what part gets played through the tweeters. That's pretty much what it means. Okay? Technical overview, they're basically saying that their subwoofer uses a fourth order bandpass design rather than a simpler ported bass reflex did I say bass? No, I said band pass. Good. Rather than a simpler ported base reflex subwoofer. So these two diagrams, you know what? I'm not an audio engineer. I don't know the benefits of that design, but it's definitely worth mentioning to you guys in case you do know the difference. They talk on oh, hold on, don't necessarily show them that. I don't know if they can see that. So uh, they talk an awful lot about why using the FTC standard for power output matters. And I'm going to summarize a couple pages in the reviewer's guide as well, it means that it can provide that power over an extended period of time. It also means that that power is going to be balanced between the different parts of the speaker system. Because you could buy a 500 watt speaker system that has a 450 watt subwoofer and 225 watt satellites, and it's going to provide a very unsatisfactory listening experience if you're doing anything other than listening to explosions. So that's why that is important. You have a late night mode, which I should have mentioned before, but what it does is it just adjusts the crossfire, crossover point so that the satellites are going to play more of your base than the subwoofer, which means that you're not going to bother your neighbors late at night. Headphone processing mode, I mentioned before, the Mod X processing is for making it sound more like a theater. And Corsair really recommends, they're, they're not going to go ahead and say that, yeah, this is the be all and end all. It's that simple. They're just saying you have this option, you can try it out. If you like it, great. It'll sound great with certain movies, bad with others, but that's fine, that's life. They've given you a lot of different modes to play with. It also has a karaoke mode, which applies processing that attempts to remove or significantly reduce the vocals, which is pretty neat. Maybe I'll do like a karaoke video with these speakers to show off that uh, particular little feature. And they've got a bunch of other equalizer presets as well. Pop, jazz, FPS, so let's talk about what the SP2500 is designed for. It is designed to be listened to at close range, so it's not really for your living room, it's for a computer. Okay, that's one thing. Second of all, it is designed to be used with a sweet spot. So if you have multiple listeners, this is not marketed as you know a 360 degree field of listening or anything like that. It has a sweet spot, which really any speaker system does, and that is designed to be right where your head is. So that's why they include the stands, that's why they include two speakers, you aim them at your head, you want to create a sweet spot, and you gotta play around with a little bit to find out where it is. Uh, one thing to mention in here is why doesn't it have a digital input? Well, it's completely unnecessary. So I think that covers pretty much everything I wanted to say about the SP2500. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other videos.